The Monument to the Great Fire of London, more commonly known simply as the Monument, is a fluted Doric column in London, England, situated near the northern end of London Bridge. Commemorating the Great Fire of London, it stands at the junction of Monument Street and Fish Street Hill, 202 feet, 62 meters, in height and 202 feet west of the spot in Pudding Lane where the Great Fire started on 2 September 1666. Constructed between 1671 and 1677, it was built on the site of St. Margaret, New Fish Street, the first church to be destroyed by the Great Fire. It is Grade I listed and is a scheduled monument. Another monument, the Golden Boy of Pie Corner, marks the point near Smithfield where the fire was stopped. The monument comprises a Doric column built of Portland stone topped with a gilded urn of fire. It was designed by Christopher Wren and Robert Hooke. Its height marks its distance from the site of the shop of Thomas Fariner, or Fariner, the King's Baker, where the blaze began. The viewing platform near the top of the monument is reached by a narrow winding staircase of 311 steps. A mesh cage was added in the mid-19th century to prevent people jumping to the ground, after six people had committed suicide there between 1788 and 1842. Three sides of the base carry inscriptions in Latin. The one on the south side describes actions taken by King Charles II following the fire. The inscription on the east side describes how the monument was started and brought to perfection, and under which mares. Inscriptions on the north side describe how the fire started, how much damage it caused, and how it was eventually extinguished. The Latin word said Furor papisticus qui tamdu travit non dum restinguiture, but popish frenzy, which wrought such horrors, is not yet quenched, were added to the end of the inscription on the orders of the court of aldermen in 1681 during the ferment of the popish plot. Text on the east side originally falsely blamed Roman Catholics for the fire, burning of this Protestant city, begun and carried on by the treachery and malice of the popish faction. The words blaming Catholics were chiseled out with Catholic emancipation in 1830. It's actually snowing today on the 5th of April 2021. Crazy snow. Yesterday it was 15-20 uh, degrees, so the weather is quite changeable these days. And I'm walking around the Tower of London. The west side of the base displays a sculpture, by Keyes Gabriel Kibber, in alto and bass relief, of the destruction of the city, with Charles II and his brother, James, the Duke of York, later King James II, surrounded by liberty, architecture, and science, giving directions for its restoration. It gives its name to the nearby London Underground Station, Monument. One of the best views of Tower Bridge in London. Probably uh, temperature is around zero degrees Celsius. The first rebuilding act, passed in 1669, stipulated that the better to preserve the memory of this dreadful visitation, a column of either brass or stone should be set up on Fish Street Hill, on or near the site of Fariner's Bakery, where the fire began. Christopher Wren, a surveyor general of the King's Works, was asked to submit a design. Wren worked with Robert Hooke on the design. It is impossible to disentangle the collaboration between Hook and Wren, but Hook's drawings of possible designs for the column still exist, with Wren's signature on them indicating his approval of the drawings rather than their authorship. It was not until 1671 that the city council approved the design, and it took six years to complete the 202 feet, 62 meters, column. It was two more years before the inscription, which had been left to Wren, or to Wren's choice, to decide upon, was set in place. Commemorating, with a brazen disregard for the truth, the fact that London rises again, three short years complete that which was considered the work of ages. Yeah. Hook's surviving drawings show that several versions of the monument were submitted for consideration, a plain obelisk, a column garnished with tongues of fire, and the fluted Doric column that was eventually chosen. The real contention came with the problem of what type of ornament to have at the top. 
Initially, Ren favored a statue of a phoenix with outstretched wings rising from the ashes, but as the column neared completion he decided instead on a 15 feet meters, statue either of Charles II, or a sword-wielding female to represent a triumphant London, the cost of either being estimated at £1,050. Charles himself disliked the idea of his statue atop the monument and instead preferred a simple copper-gilded bull with flames sprouting from the top, costing a little over £325, but ultimately it was the design of a flaming gilt bronze urn suggested by Robert Hooke that was chosen. The total cost of the monument was £13,450 11s 9d, of which £11,300 was paid to the mason contractor Joshua Marshall. Joshua Marshall was master of the Masons Company in 1670. The Edinburgh-born writer James Boswell visited the monument in 1763 to climb the 311 steps. Wren and Hook built the monument to double up as a scientific instrument. It has a central shaft meant for use as a zenith telescope and for use in gravity and pendulum experiments that connects to an underground laboratory for observers to work accessible through a hatch in the floor of the present-day ticket booth. Vibrations from heavy traffic on Fish Street Hill rendered the experimental conditions unsuitable. The upper boat just resumed working, just uh, from the 29th of March, 67 days ago. Before that, the river was pretty much empty, so it's uh, really good that they're back operating again.